Good people, what's going on? You guys are listening to your favorite podcast, The Statement, presented by the GSU Signal. I'm with my boy Tyrone. Tyrone, how you feeling today, big man? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Good, man. Always good to see the man Tyrone out here grinding, bro. I've been seeing all the photos you've been posting. <laughs> Everything has been fired, man. So big ups to you, man. My boy doing his thing. Yeah, man. I've been trying. How's your week been? Good, bro. Um, it's crazy because it's March 1st. So yeah. time is flying. Like This semester, super crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, we're almost done, of course. So it's just, it's been crazy. No complaints. How about yourself? Uh, this week has been pretty telling for me. Okay. Um, mostly I've been trying to, uh, I've been trying to get off social media a lot. Really. Right, 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 right. I, I finally, on that. I finally updated my phone. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to update mine. And on the newest update, well, it's probably not new at this mm-hmm. point, but on iOS 12, they have like a, a screen time thing. You can, oh, wow. you can manage how much time you spend on certain apps. And you can Dope. set it so that, like, I have mine set now because Instagram is really my big thing. Yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah. I deleted Snapchat and Twitter just off my phone completely, Fire. like, a That's while ago. Up. But um, Instagram is my main thing. Uh, and I just have it set for, like, two hours okay. uh, during the week and four hours on the weekend. Okay. Um, and then I think I have my phone set for, like, after, like, 10 o'clock. It just minimizes how many apps I can use. And it actually, like you that. know, I feel... I've been in that spare time. Yeah. I've been trying to get back on my um, expand my music taste. Okay, because I haven't really been, been I'm with keeping it. up with everything. I'm with it. So, and this was a great weekend because this weekend we had Two Chains album yes. that came out, Solange's yes. album. Yes, I oh, love man. it. I love Solange it. Solange great. I love it. I love it. I mean, all these albums, man, is crazy. So so far, how do you feel about Two Chains album? So so far, to I listened to it like maybe twice all the way through, just mm-hmm. on my travels here. Right. Um, well, I listened to her, his and Solange on the way here, mm-hmm. but uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, about this before we started. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That rap is making this movement now where it's very introspective. Yes. And it's very like oh, you know, self aware. Yes. So they're moving kind of away. I mean, there's still the flexing. There's still mm-hmm. the you know, that's still there. Right. But there's something behind it. Yeah. Like, you know, the substance. So do you think that Kendrick and Cole probably had something to do with this brand new wave? Because you remember it was a time even when Damn came out or even when uh, 2014 Forest Hills Drive or, you know, Cole's other projects as well. Some people would say Cole, he was too boring because everything he was saying, it was like he was preaching all the time or Kendrick, Mm -hmm. you know, dropping the Bible verses or dropping all the facts and things like that. So do you think that it changed from that being somewhat too woke to now we have even the offsets of the world talking about trying to be more woke to change himself having lebron james a and r on there Mm. and just having that album titled rap go to the league so what do you think about that yeah um i don't know because 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 lyricism and substance i don't think it ever died Mm -hmm. i don't think it ever really like you know i just think that the the swag rapping just became more popular. I right, really think right. that's what it was. Right. Um, because like you said, Cole, Kendrick, and Drake were even during all of this Migos and all that, they yeah. were still considered the kings of rap. Like yes. those three. They were yeah. still the top yep. dogs. So I don't think that it I would say they probably kept it in the forefront. Mm-hmm. They made sure people didn't forget that, you know, this is what rappers can do and this right. is what music is supposed to be like. Right. Well right. not necessarily supposed to be like, but you know. Yeah. Um but Maybe I think now with especially with how Cole is moving and Drake and how they're moving and how they're reaching out towards the younger yes. generation. Yeah. I think that may be something for them to be like, oh, okay. Like, you know. And also I think people are just getting older and it's mm-hmm. like you know, I have more to talk about now. You're talking about like the same thing. And yeah. I think that that's something too, because I used to tell people, speaking of great weekends, great weeks for music, last week for R&B was fire. Like we had underground artists like Eric Bellinger, mm. who's amazing. He writes stuff for Chris Brown. Right. Uh, we've had El Hay, which is super underground. He dropped something too. So I think really I was in a space too, where I stopped listening to just a lot of rap because I got tired of it because it was like the same concepts like if it wasn't Cole or Drake or Kendrick I really couldn't connect to it because I think Cole and Kendrick and Drake what they can do which I found very cool is that they can present personable things so even with Drake like even how he dresses like you don't see chains you know you don't see the crazy watches you see a regular expensive watch but it's not flashy you see regular clothes and then at the same time like he can still be fresh but he's not like the Migos, you know, with the, all mm-hmm. the change. And look, everybody do what you do. But I think that that's why everybody loves Kendrick and Cole and Drake. Because you remember some people were even saying how Cole, how he looks homeless. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Kendrick, 
um, I think it was like back in 2015 when his niece, uh, she graduated from high school and he got her a nice Toyota Corolla and people, they were like, oh, he's so cheap. But then when you really think about it, no, that's a nice car. It was, yeah. it came out that year. And I think too, that they're changing this whole paradigm from being flashy during like the bad boy era with Diddy. And now I think that we're just more laid back, just like how me and you, like right now, how like we're just chilling. Mm -hmm. And I think too, that that's how people are starting to dress now. And then also too, I think Kanye, we have to give Kanye his credit. Really? How does Kanye I love Kanye. This? By the way, how do you feel about Kanye's beat that you saw? Um, did you oh, see? Oh, it? him in the, yeah, the church yeah, thing. Yeah. I don't know, man. Kanye is. I mean, I He's never. Up. I never doubted his music ability. So seeing that is always just like reassuring yeah, to me. But yeah. how do how do you how do you figure he fits into? this? I think that Kanye, man. Um, I know for me, when I played sports all throughout high school, some days I would wear jeans, but most days I would be wearing joggers, some sneakers. Mm -hmm. Like right now, like if if anybody sees me on campus, nine times out of ten, I'm probably wearing some joggers, some sneakers, <laughs> and a hoodie or mm -hmm. or a nice or a chill long sleeve t-shirt mm -hmm. and I'm chilling or during the spring you're gonna see me wearing some mm -hmm. some cut off shorts or something laid back or if I am wearing jeans I'm dressing very comfortable so I think that yay with his style when he came out with the the joggers or with the homeless look somewhat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that made people dress more lax but I, I already know like that wave it was it was already started yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I could see that. Yeah, He's done it before. He exactly. definitely did it when he first Polos came out. Polos and backpacks. Right, right, right. Right. And then uh, he started, like, he, I mean, to me, he started, like, putting people on big designers and stuff like that. But yeah. you credit that to a lot of people. Facts. But, um, okay. I mean, I could see that. You put yeah. it that way. You put it that way. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, just really getting in tune uh, with music. I've also been going back in music, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been listening, just, like, really random stuff. Like, I started listening to, like, the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> like okay i listen to, like the eagles first two albums just like and i mean i have a lot of down like i commute so yeah. i have a lot of time to just play. sit yeah so yeah. that's really what i'm trying to do just to to, to eliminate the social media yes well not necessarily eliminate it but yeah. mediate it yeah yeah you know I'm with you, man, because mm -hmm. I think, too, when we just scroll on social media, like that builds anxiety somewhat. It definitely does. Because you're just constantly scrolling. So you're trying to find that next thing. And then when you get to the bottom, refresh, explore page, uh -huh. scrolling, scrolling. And then you go down like that, that crazy wormhole where you go onto the explore page and you click on somebody's page. You start watching all their videos. Exactly. And it's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. And it's also like, you know, especially... Uh, in like an hour, mm -hmm. you know, feel like journalism and stuff. Yeah. It's it's easy to sometimes like go on social media and you'll see other people doing things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's easy to get d discouraged yeah, or yeah. you know, but you know, I, you have to remind yourself that you know, for one, they're not necessarily doing what I want to do. That's it. Or you know, there's more behind this picture that they're posting. There you go. But it's hard though. Like you mm -hmm. see it all the time, and after a while, you're just like, oh man. So yeah. I don't know. I, I had to. I had to take a step back and. I love it, hey Tyrone. Seriously, man, I completely commend you for that because I think so many people sometimes we get just captured by trying to be on the speed of everybody else, mm -hmm. and I think social media that makes. And I think that's why people talk about anxiety so much now too, because just like what you said, when you can see somebody, and it's like, dang, he's doing this or she's doing that. But then you have to take a step back and look at where you were at five years ago, three years ago, even three months ago and say, man, the fact that I'm right here right now is like an extreme blessing. But we get so encapsulated with, oh, this person, he's doing this. She's doing that. So I got to be doing this and doing that. So exactly. that's what happens, man. And I think that people will compare themselves too much and then they start picking stuff on their bodies or about their personalities, about the smallest thing that they do how they dress, whatever. And then you're constantly not at peace with yourself. So I'm telling you, man, you're going to be clear in the mind, everything, the spirit, all that stuff. I'm telling you. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. You're going to be all right, man. <laughs> Tyrone is being very mature. He's taking care of business. That's what's up, man. <laughs> that's what's up. Tyrone, today, man, we got some great topics. I'm excited. We got some great topics. Um, let's see. Let's go through it. We got Jesse Smollett. Oh. That's going to be hilarious. Uh, Kaepernick, NFL Settlement. Robert Kraft, and trivia in between questions. You already know at the end, free plug, artists, businesses, whatever. So starting off, man, with Mr. Jesse Smollett, how do you feel about the whole situation? Uh, man, I mean, I don't even know. How, how do we even start the story off? Because, like, <sighs> man, uh, how could we start this off? So Jesse Smollett, he said that he was going to a subway in Chicago, 
at two in the morning. Mind you, this was during that crazy week where it was like negative 26. <laughs> so he was doing all that stuff. So then he goes there and he said that he was beat up and harassed by two MAGA supporters wearing a MAGA hat and saying, this is MAGA country. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie. The moment that I heard that, I was like, he's lying. Really? Yeah. Because first off, racist white people in Chicago at nighttime, that does not go together. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing MAGA hats, that does not go together. I've been to Chicago two or three times. I love Chicago. That's like one of my favorite cities. And I know, just like any city, that there are certain parts, uh -huh. just like how... Atlanta, when people are coming from out of town, you don't go to really Atlanta if you want to enjoy Atlanta. Like you should go to Buckhead, right. Midtown, mm -hmm. places like not Atlanta, not <laughs> Atlanta. Like it's yeah, yeah, a yeah, different yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that when people thought of Chicago, for people that's never been there from the news, you're thinking of hood Chicago. So most likely he was probably in the nicer area of Chicago. He's probably like on the north side. Okay. But still. It's 2 in the morning. I don't go to Subway at 2 in the morning. <laughs> and I know you probably don't go to Subway at 2 in the morning because I didn't know that it stays open. Yeah, I didn't even know there 24 hours. most Subways that we know close at 2 in the morning or okay. before, like way before. Yeah. So the fact that that happened and then the fact that he said that they put a noose around his neck and poured bleach mm -hmm. on him. Mm -hmm. So that was strike one, strike two, and three for me because <laughs> who carries bleach and a noose and what races... MAGA supporters watch Empire and know that he's Jamal. Not even, I promise you, the average black person on campus, if Jesse Smollett, before this whole incident was walking on campus, I'd probably say about 50% would know who he is, but the rest would just keep walking. Yeah. So the fact that racist white people knew who he was at 2 in the morning at nighttime, yeah. and yeah, yeah. it was freezing, so he had to be covered up, scully on, a mm -hmm. hat or something, so you could barely see his face. So how do you know that that's him? And then you have... A noose and bleach and two MAGA hats and you can't hide a noose and some bleach walking down the street yeah how do you have a ski mask on and a <laughs> and a hat but yeah I, I, I'll say the first hint of doubt and I'll give credit where credit is due mm -hmm. Joe Budden was the first person. oh for real? he was the yeah. first person who put the hint of doubt in my mind because yeah. I remember when the notification like I think I just got like a like a CNN mm -hmm. update so I knew it was serious I was right. like oh man they were like yeah star from Empire and they like poured bleach yeah. on everything and I didn't really like and I guess this is at my fault. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't really go too deep into the detail yeah. of it. I was just like, "Oh dang, like that's crazy." Mm -hmm. um, but then I listened to Joe Budden, and he was the first one who was like, "I don't know, man." He was like, "There's three things that he's like, I don't trust the police, Facts. I don't trust the government, and Facts. I don't trust Hollywood." And he Facts. was like, "All, all three, three of those things are involved in this." He's right. So uh, they were like, you know, it just didn't seem right there. Then they were mm -hmm. like, Taraji P. Henson, after it came out, mm -hmm. she was saying like, oh, support Jesse and go stream his music. Like, not even like... But what does that have to do with... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, <laughs> you know, he was like, that just wasn't behavior for... Facts. Not even not Taraji, because not like, we don't know her, right. but just a normal human being. Like, if yeah. something happens to you, I'm not going to say, oh, well, go support his music or go right. buy his merch or something. It's right. like, you know... Yeah, that was just weird. But I think for me, the smoking gun was. I think it had to do with when people were like, it was too cold. They were like, "There's no way in the world somebody's walking out at night," uh, you know, being, you know, looking actively looking so to hurt questions. someone. So many questions. You know what's crazy though? If you what's have that? you gone back and watched like his ABC interview because he did an interview like shortly after it happened when he did it. I was laughing. I'm not going to lie. Really? Because Robin Roberts, right? She yes. interviewed him? Yes, 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 yes. When I watched it, I was laughing because her facial expressions. She yeah, was she, not buying it. She could see something was up. She was not buying it. And then I think something, too, and this is how I knew that he was lying. When he said, I'm so frustrated because people are questioning me and people don't believe me. And, hey, I'm no expert. But <clears throat> if something happened to me, I could care less what anybody believes and I'm going to tell you what happened. If you don't believe, you're going to look dumb because more evidence is going to come out. Exactly. And the fact that he did not comply with the police, I get it. Most black people do not trust the police. But at the same time, this is the only authoritative department or or this space that I can go to. So I'm going to comply with him. And if they want my phone, you got it. But the uh -huh. fact that he didn't want to give up his phone. Yeah. I'm like, what are you hiding? Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and it was the noose crazing. thing, too. They were yeah. like, he, when a he, noose? he kept it around his he neck. Kept, yes, for 45 minutes. That's when I was like, hmm, something's not right. For 45 minutes, not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. But now... Yeah. So now everything was coming out with the... He hired two Nigerian... I'm glad that you said that. 
two Nigerian That's a beautiful segue. Empire extras. <laughs> Tyrone, I'm so glad that you said that, man. Keep going in. I'm listening. He, he Keep hired going. two Nigerian Empire extras. Yep. Paid I'm pulling them it up right now. By check. Yes. <laughs> Not even cash app. Yeah. Not even check. Just straight paper, paper. trail. Yes. <laughs> Literally. And is now like but but here's the thing the, mm-hmm. the plot sort of thickens and i've yeah. heard other people say this who are kind of like insiders in like that space because mm-hmm. the check that he wrote the memo i mean obviously the memo wasn't going to be like beat me up or something like yeah. that the memo was for some uh like gym or something like that and they were His like personal trainer yes mm-hmm. or, so they were saying like you know because these guys were um they, they all were in this you know, gym, and then a mm-hmm. lot of other big names and people are connected to this Facts. gym. That's it. I don't know. It, it was it was fishy from the jump, and now it's fishy still. Yeah, but he's man. still pleading his innocence. He's still claiming it happened. He's trying to. But die with the lie, man. And this is from CNN. Die with the lie. I like that. And one of their articles, speaking on that, uh, let's see where it starts, man. An attorney for the brothers, two Nigerians, um, they were speaking, and they also said that Smollett, he reported in January that he had been attacked in Chicago in an incident that ended with a noose around his neck. Police initially investigated the case as a possible hate crime, but now police allege that Smollett hired the, I'm about to butcher their names, Ansadario brothers and paid them $3,500 to stage the attack. Mm. Smollett faces a felony charge of disorderly conduct for, false, for falsely claiming that he was attacked, police say. Disorderly conduct is generally not charged as a felony, Chicago defense attorney Stephen Hunter told CNN in an email. But the national and international attention on the case likely made the charge more significant for the defendant, he said. That's very, I mean, he almost caused, like, uh, I mean, granted, there's already so much tension yeah. in America right now, but he Bro, just... Bro, that could have caused, like, a race war. Yes. Like, like for real. <laughs> and, and and the thing that, um, that, that really caught me about it was that... Um, Dang, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but I do know one thing I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think it was Andrew Schultz. And he was saying that... Shout out to Schultz, man. I like that. He was yeah. saying that, you know, in our head, you know, race or race... Well, you can't really pr- prove it. But necessarily mm-hmm. actual hate crimes aren't... They're not really as prevalent as we think they are. You know? I like, see what you're saying. Like, there's a I reason why saying. when it happens, it's mm-hmm. big news because, you know. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like Or at Facts. least it's not easily proven. Like, you can't easily. Just say, here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So the fact that it was so, like, plain cut and dry, just like. And oh, so quickly, too. Yeah, it was just like, this is uh, a hate crime. And it, was just, it, it just seemed fishy. But there was a question I was going to ask. Goodness gracious, I can't remember what it was. Hey, we're getting old, Tyrone. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> um, I don't remember. It'll come back to me. But it's wild, man, because I remember it was so many details and I was kind of concerned because I was saying, how do you know all of these things so fast? Like, how do you know that it was two MAGA supporters? And really, too, <laughs> and Charlamagne the God, Andrew Schultz, again, Brilliant Idiots podcast, hilarious. But Charlotte, man, he was saying, how many Trump supporters say this is MAGA country? Yeah, like. It, it just doesn't make sense. It's like a killer or a thief saying, I'm going to rob you, like, right before he robs you. It's like, it just, it doesn't work like that. Why? But I remember it now. There was a case, or there's something else, because he had something to do with the mail, too. Because apparently he sent, like, like that fake ransom or fake threat to Fox Network. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yep. And I don't know if this is true, but they were saying, like, they... He sent like a, he put like a fake white powder in there. What? Like it was just like crushed up pills, but they sent it and they put it in the mail to make it look like it was, I don't know something. Man. So I'm like, why would you? Because that probably also is what, what? added there. Like you're adding the mail into this too, and like you don't mess with the mail at all. U.S. Postal Service. Exactly. Don't do that. So like that added a whole another dimension to it. So maybe what? that's also. You problem. serious, man? I'm not. I know they definitely sent the letter. Mm-hmm. They definitely tried to do the whole like cut out the letters and right from the magazine. They sent that to Fox, and apparently that was what happened first. Apparently wow. they sent that. He sent that letter first because this is all over him wanting to get more money from Empire. I heard about that. I heard that theory. Yeah. So I that, heard that theory. Apparently, that's what. It, so he sent in like this fake little ransom letter or whatever into Fox. <laughs> this and is a wild. They boy. were like, it didn't get any attention. So what? when that didn't get any attention, he was like, "All right, well, I guess I got to go big. I have to get more attention." <laughs> exactly. And he won. In a way, <laughs> he didn't win. In a way. So my question is, Tyrone, publications like The Root, 
and on social media too, even for most people like Tariq Nasheed, when he was one of the first people like Joe Budden to say, hey guys, I think that this is just a little bit fishy. People start going in and say that, oh, you're homophobic, toxic masculinity. And he was saying like, I have gay friends. Like, I don't care. It's just that I'm calling a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. And he was saying too, sometimes for every group, there's an agenda sometimes, even for Black Lives Matter, mm. even for the LGBTQ community. Very true. Everybody, ha even Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. And sometimes with us having that agenda, the U.S. has been found guilty of that. Um, I think it was World War One, the Lusitania, I think. Mm. It was finally concluded that the U.S. probably blew up that ship so they yes. can get into the World War and build their economy. Very true. So I think that with this, Sometimes we're getting in this space now, I think, where we've become so PC that we can't even question things. And then when we do question things, all the terms start to be thrown. Right. And The Root, which I thought wasn't cool, they did a whole article talking about black men being the worst enemy for black gay men. Hmm. And in certain degrees, I see that. Mm -hmm. But in that situation, they were saying that because a lot of black men were coming forth and saying that they weren't buying Jesse's story. Mm -hmm. But now... The Root probably has to retract that statement after seeing. And see, that right there is scary that we have journalists that's jumping the gun so fast to call people names without even all the facts being there. It's also, I think Denzel said everybody's fighting to be first, but everybody's not fighting to oh. be like the most accurate. Mm, he said that. Yeah. Wow. So he was like, you know, I forget, I think it was some award show, some red mm -hmm. carpet he said that, but, but it's very true. Yeah. Like everybody's like, and I mean, we even kind of learned this in school in a way. Yeah. Like they teach us like, you gotta be quick. Mm -hmm. You gotta be the first person to break that story. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you'll sacrifice maybe a fact here or, uh, <laughs> you know, something there just to, get the story out. that's crazy um but it's, it's very it's very weird but somebody pointed out something to me mm -hmm. i don't know if i mentioned it on here before i may have in the past but i think i did but it was something like uh you know comparing the news cycle now to like wrestling or it's just like wow we, we fit our own narratives like wow wow they, wow, they, wow, it, wow they they play to your emotions obviously we yeah. talked about that but yeah. it's just wrestling it's like you suspend your disbelief of that, okay, maybe this does sound fishy, mm -hmm. but you just go with it because it makes the story make sense. Right. And I, th I mean, it's almost like, I don't want to say human condition, but it's a, a very modern human condition mm -hmm. where it's like you paint the story in your own head before you've even heard it. So wow. when the ending doesn't match what your ending is, then something's like, you're like, no, impossible. You just throw it away. Exactly. So right. it, it's just crazy. And I mean, we all do it unconsciously. Mm -hmm. You'll hear something and you'll be like, well, I've seen this movie before. I know where it's gonna go, mm -hmm. and I guess is where the the saying like you know reality is often stranger than fiction. Yeah, you know it's it's crazy. Sometimes you'll hear the real story and be like, yeah, yeah. it's not that sexy. But you brought up something that made me think, mm -hmm. you know, about like the Lusitania and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking even Rosa Parks. You know, people. She wasn't the first. Or just people hear that story of like, oh, she you know got on the bus and a white man asked her to get up and she didn't get up. But that whole thing was orchestrated. Mm -hmm. Like the white man was in on it. Rosa was in on it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, everybody was in on it to create yep. this one moment. And it made me think mm -hmm. or made me ponder at mm -hmm. least how many of like these very monumental events in our lives or in our history are, you know, orchestrated. There you go. I'm with you on that. I wonder how many. I'm with you. And two. What about people that make these false stories or false accusations? Do you believe that they should be not only held accountable, but possibly, too, they should serve that jail time that the defendant would possibly serve? I think that may be a little extreme. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes somebody will blame somebody for something. And, and the law is very, like, mm -hmm. flexible. Cause yeah. They, they can throw the book at you and give you the maximum sentence or they can give you the very least. Mm -hmm. So it'd be kind of hard to do that because if, right. like, say I accused you of some sort of aggravated assault mm -hmm. and, like, the 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 sentencing was five to seven years or five mm -hmm. to ten, you know, who's to say, you know, if, if you turn out to be false, it'd be mm -hmm. weird. Like, do I give you ten years? Do I give you five years? Do right. I give you... I don't know, it's kind of gray area, but I right. think there definitely should be some sort of, and there is a penalty if mm -hmm. you do give a false claim, but I don't know if jail time. That's what I'm saying, know. because just knowing that Jesse, that he could be in jail, that's not going to turn out too well. So yeah. it's, it's kind of scary. But again, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's tough, man. And somebody posted this too, and I was like, hmm, um, the same energy that we have when it comes to Jesse or 
Yeah, so the same energy that we have towards Jesse of how everybody's bashing him now, uh-huh. which is funny how it went from posting pictures like he died when it first happened to now everybody's just going in on him in memes. People are fickle. For real. So seeing that and people are saying, oh, he's a liar and he's done all these crazy things. But then somebody posted this. and I was like, wow, I forgot about that. Emmett Till, the woman who accused him falsely is still alive. And she recently admitted that she lied. Mm. And she's still walking around. Yes. And I think Dave Chappelle pointed that out. He was like, you know, one of the biggest. He did on Netflix on the yeah, story. Th- yeah, that, that lie kickstarted a whole bunch of things that led to the civil rights movement and eventually black people being able to vote and desegregation and all these type of things. And, and that's what I was saying. Like, you know, th- there's a quote that I always liked. It was saying that, you know, history is typically written by the victor. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and I mean, that was dealing more in like war. Right. But it's very true. Like history mm-hmm. is just written by whoever has the loudest voice. Right. So, you know, if that white woman said he did it, then that's what happened. And Facts. then we have all these things that happen. Facts. Um, but, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. There, there's, there's a lot of I think people don't realize. You know, people always say there's no harm in a little white lie, mm. but sometimes one lie can evolve into like this huge web of lies and eventually like drastically alter, you know, the way things are meant to go. Facts. And speaking on that too, man, the fact that that one lie, we wouldn't have Martin Luther King or we wouldn't have a, a Malcolm X, like all these people from that lie. So sometimes that bad thing sparked a good thing. Mm-hmm. And I think like Jesse's situation, this could possibly spark a good thing because now we have to understand that being PC is cool, but we can be overly PC to the point that we don't question things anymore. Yeah. Or if we even try to think just against the grain, we'll be afraid of, oh, I'll be labeled as this or I'll be thought of as that. So I commend Joe Budden for, you know, just expressing how he felt off the bat before it was even popular. Yeah. So I think that we need those people, even even for us being young black men, you know, even when somebody is, is shot or, or when somebody has an altercation with the police, of course, we're going to be emotional. But I think that this even teaches us in future instances, or even when it comes to race relations, we still have to get all the facts first before we make any side. Mm -hmm. Because then we're going to look stupid if, Mm -hmm. like Jesse's case, right now how everybody, the root, or all these people were were saying all these things against certain people. But then now, hindsight 2020, it's like you kind of, and even if you felt the way behind closed doors, just wait until you get all the facts first. Exactly. So. And I think the worst or best, depending on your Mm -hmm. viewpoint on the world, but um, this just gives fuel to the other side. Yes. And now Trump can say, see, they're trying to lie on me. Exactly. And he he was quick to jump on that, too. He was quick to be like, oh, so this is what we're doing now. You know, he was like, where was all this talk? You know, he he loved that. He ate that up. That's it. Uh, Tyrone, I didn't even think about that. You're right, man. Yeah. It's just like. I don't know, man. That that was the most heartbreaking thing about all of it. Like, I don't really care for, you know, but I was like, the fact that he lied, I'm like, now this ruins it for not even, I mean, it's not even just going to be black gay men. Like, yeah. even like when women come out, that they already have the stigma that all women are liars when they come out with this. Talk about rape. Exactly. Yep. So now it's like, now they have a, a, a something, a straw man to look at and be like, see, this, the is, case. this is, it happens. Yes. We told you it happens. Yep. And they're going to be like, racism doesn't exist. Look hey, at Jesse. It, yeah. I mean, like, it's just, it's all made up. So, so Tyrone, man, last thing, because I just have to get this answer question by you because you probably have the knowledge for this because I okay. know that you do uh, before we go into the next topic. So some people have been saying, and I remember I was at first saying this too, because I was like emotional about it. But do you think that just like what you said, that we're going to be in a space in in a time now that politicians like Trump, not even or I can say the white American that is a Republican or even Democratic, liberal, whatever, that is oblivious to race Mm -hmm. in America in its long history can now when they want to defend certain things that go on, they can say, hey. I don't know, because look at Jesse. He lied. So is it really that bad? Because Jesse, he lied about it. Well, I think what this is, I think it's also a reflection of how bad it is, like how bad it is and how like impossible it is for you to ignore racism now. Mm -hmm. Because now the only lie you can go to is one of the worst lies ever. Like this is the only thing you can go to to be like, oh, see, I told you. And I was actually reading 
uh, this article by CNN that they just po- published yesterday, and they were talking about like this was probably one of the craziest like Black history. Yeah, months. somebody said it was the worst. <laughs> yeah, but but CNN did a whole thing about it, and they were saying like this Black History Month really showed like the 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 like the the cracking of like that veil that people have over racism like it's slowly like you can't ignore it anymore yeah because i mean just this month we had uh we had this thing happen Mm -hmm. we had uh everything that happened with the academy awards facts uh something else happened this month as well i mean you could argue the kaepernick thing as well Mm -hmm. um and there was something but it was just so many things that happened this month that Mm -hmm. were people combating or uh, facing or something mm-hmm. that has to do with racism, and it's like it, it's just becoming impossible now for you right. to for you to ignore it. Like That's I think right. it's becoming. I heard this crazy theory. You remember Bird Box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody did a super crazy deep dive on that movie and was like, "Is it a representation of white people being oblivious to racism, like hmm. trying to not see it, trying to not see it? It's this invisible monster that nobody can see, but yet it's killing everybody." But everybody's like, I don't see it. Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but then when you finally see it, it's, oh, my God. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's facts. I like that, man. It's crazy. It was a funny article, but <laughs> it was, but, you know, I liked it. I got to check that out, man. And speaking on race, race relations, Colin Kaepernick, I remember um, when we spoke about this, it was like two weeks ago on that Friday, man. We didn't speak about it on the podcast, but the fact that we heard that Cap got a settlement between the range of 60 and $80 million. Mm-hmm. And... I remember, I think I asked you, do you think that he really won or did both sides just come to a mutual agreement? And I think, though, my mind changed when I found out that it was a non-disclosure agreement. Right. Right. So I'm kind of on the fence because I'm like, in one aspect, he got compensated way more, which is a beautiful thing, which somewhat proves his case because they wouldn't give 60 to 80 mil just because somebody was taking a knee. Mm-hmm. So this proves that he was showing or that he had receipts that they were going against him and trying to make sure that he was blackballed and also the fact that he had to sign a non-disclosure agreement, mm-hmm. which further proves that you don't want for this information to get out. Mm-hmm. My only issue was, was there a way to get that money but not sign an NDA? So then you can expose the NFL mm-hmm. and get your money. So now people know how bad the NFL and how racist they are. Mm. But at the same time, life goes on now because now, in a sense, playing devil's advocate, some people, they can now say, he just got paid off now. And right. now he has to be quiet because he can't talk about what happened. So his whole stance is now eradicated because he can't talk about it. And life's going to go on because most likely he's not going to get picked up by any NFL team still. Mm-hmm. So you're just going to go off in the sunset with your money. But th- I think... Most people have this fear that everybody's going to forget. And because Cap, he's going to be quiet. Because Cap, he doesn't do interviews. He doesn't do all the speaking engagements and things like that. So he's just going to go off with his $60, $80 million. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So how do you feel about it, Tyrone? Um, Well, I think one of the one things that I... And somebody had to point this out to me. People had to realize that that court case didn't necessarily have anything to do with... He was just saying that he was unfairly terminated. That's what that whole case was about. Right. So... um, I, I feel like they probably had a case for that. Mm-hmm. And probably within that case, they had some things that would have led to the blackballing mm-hmm. and things like that. And the NFL was just like, well, let's just cut our losses now and just say, yeah, fine. You were unfairly terminated. Here's your money. Yep. Um, but what I what I like to do, I also agree with you the fact that it being, you know, undisclosed amount and mm-hmm. everything that happened in between it. That is a little fishy. But once yep. again, dealing with big corporations, they're going to try to do that. Yeah. But here's the thing. I feel like no one can make an accurate statement until we see what Cap does. You know, what he does after this will show us where his intentions really were. And I go. have, in my good faith, I feel mm-hmm. like he will continue to fight the fight that he's been yes. fighting. Mm-hmm. He will still, you know, be an outspoken activist mm-hmm. and do all, you know, the actions that he was doing. Yep. But, I mean, we don't know that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, you know, if part of me feels like you know a lot of talk is saying that he really wants to play football mm-hmm. so he may go back to the nfl but like, yeah there's the rise now of the aaf now yeah i think it's the alliance of american football now yeah is it american alliance football something like that? yeah something yeah. like that but that's a new thing now mm-hmm. so you know he has possibly his options now yeah but i feel like 
I wouldn't be upset if he went back to the NFL mm-hmm. because that was his livelihood. He he you know he worked and his whole life to make it there. He won his case. He already got paid. Exactly. Right. So I won't be mad if he goes back to the NFL. But what he does during that national anthem will tell me everything I need to know. So let's say that he stands. What changes throughout your thought process? Also, what is the first thing that will go through your mind if you see Cap stand during the national anthem? If he stands for the national anthem, I'm I'm, I'm gonna have to say he probably sold out. Are you serious? Um, I mean, maybe not, you know, probably a little bit more complex than that, but essentially it'll tell me, like, okay, th- I mean, he may still feel deep down inside, like, you know, whatever he may feel, but, you know, actions speak way louder than words. So if he stands, that'll tell me that, okay, well, you just, you got what you wanted out of it, and now you're like, okay, as long as I have my job back. It's more about the job. Because wow. what you call it still kneeling? Eric agreed. Yeah. And, and he knew the first game he got back. That exactly. was crazy. So he knew the very first game that he got back. So I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite, uh, um, like, hot takes theories that people were saying could happen um, <laughs> is if the Patriots pick up Colin Kaepernick. Because I was going to tell you that too, man. Because they were saying, you know, Roger Goodell and the Patriots organization have kind of like a, a frenemy you know relationship yeah, going on yeah yeah and you you can see in roger goodell's face every time, time he has to hand that During trophy the Super Bowl, off. you saw that he didn't hand robert Kraft the trophy exactly so now imagine <laughs> roger goodell having to go. hand colin kaepernick a super bowl trophy that's it in a patriots jersey that's it that'll be an ultimate win standing or not and i think that that would be so ironic too mm-hmm. a patriots jersey taking a knee fighting for injustices and he's in boston a very predominantly white town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be crazy. But, I mean, I don't know, man. If if Cap signs that, bro, that's – because I think Cap, even if he stands, I would be thrown off too because the fact that Eric Reed, he didn't stand. He's still taking that knee. And then I think that this is Cap's image now. Like, this is who you are. So, just like Jordan, you know, with the – Jump man, mm-hmm. you are the man that's taking the knee with the afro. Exactly, and I think that he has to stick with that because I don't care, man. I don't care how much money in the world. You have to understand, just like what Monique was saying, like you got to have integrity. And I think that you've been well, well paid before. Yeah. And this is what people don't understand, Tyrone. Before this sixty, eighty mil, when they were like, "Oh, he could be harder for money." No, before Cap got cut, when he signed his deal. That extension when he was popping like in 2012, 2013, he was a top 10 highest paid quarterback in the league. Mm. But you know how that changes every year. Right. But at the time, he was in the top 10. So he was not hurting at all. He yeah. was not hurting. Yeah. At all. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'll have to see what he does afterwards. But I think he realizes that this is bigger than him. Yes. And that's what I would hope he does realize that like this wasn't, I mean, yes, it was your case. It was your you know, personal yes. trouble, mm-hmm. but it became way bigger than that. Yep. And so I feel like him kneeling, it won't necessarily tell me that he's been paid off, mm-hmm. but it'll tell me that he's very more focused on himself than he is the betterment of everyone else. That's it. And I mean, we'll see time always tells us the truth, but, but I, I feel don't like know. he will though. I feel I like think he'll so continue too. to, I think to so. do what he's doing. I just, I would love to see cap do interviews though. Hmm. I mean, there's there's power in silence. It is, but I would just love seeing that. Just seeing him on Fox News one day or on CNN, ESPN, mm. that would be really fire. Or maybe he just doesn't work well under interviews. Maybe he doesn't do well under that pressure. Facts. Facts. And he has to, like, get his words together. Yeah, so. that's true. Because I just think when I see, like, old Malcolm X videos or yeah. old MLK videos or James Baldwin and I see them on interviews just tearing it up, like, bro. These guys were intellectual giants. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe he just doesn't have the words for yeah. it, and yeah. he's just like, "I'll just do." Yeah, so can't be mad at and that. And be silent. And speaking of the Patriots, man, Robert Kraft. Yeah, 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 he yeah, yeah. Caught. Yikes! Allegedly, we have to say that. But sex trafficking ring. Um, they said he was getting sexual services. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. For about fifteen minutes, and yeah, man, they are putting those charges on him. He was. The the news broke actually last Friday, and hearing about that, I was in shock when I saw it on ESPN. Like, dang. Yeah. Right after the Super Bowl. Now, some people say, conspiracy theorists here, not me, but just in the World Wide Web, of course, that uh-huh. um, Steven Jackson, he played in the NBA, and now he's on ESPN's show called The Jump. But he was saying that this is no coincidence at all. That first off, we already know Roger Goodell does not like him mm-hmm. at all. 
Second of all, he's formed this coalition with Jay-Z, Michael Rubin, Meek Mill, Van Jones for mm -hmm. the prison reform. Mm -hmm. And also, like what you said, that there's been rumors about him wanting to sign Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. Think about the Patriots brand already. Six Super Bowls, tied with the most with Pittsburgh as the most historic franchises right now. And I think that the Patriots have surpassed Pittsburgh right now because they got six and they can get some more. And they have the greatest quarterback of all time. Mm -hmm. And Brady on his way out, you have Colin Kaepernick, a younger quarterback, and you can get a black fan base with the already black fan base that loves Tom Brady mm -hmm. and the white fan base. And it's the Patriots, and the Patriots have been voted as America's favorite football team right now. The Patriots, red, white, and blue, American flag, all that stuff, and you have Colin Kaepernick. I think that for Roger Goodell and for the NFL, that would be one of the most detrimental things because you have <laughs> you have two polar opposites but working together, and you would have everything. Like You would have championships. You would have the pro-black people, yeah. the, the hoteps, all the people with cap, and you would have your MAGA supporters liking Tom Brady, and yeah. No so. one man should have all that power. <laughs> <laughs> no one man. It's great. It, and and, and, and you, that, that's a very true, because I mean, that happens. I mean, yeah. whenever, whenever the powers that be see someone or something getting a little too yes. much of a following, you know, I was listening to this Patrice O'Neal joke, <laughs> and he was saying that you know, he was he was doing some bit about <coughs> racism, but he was mm -hmm. talking about they don't care when you are speaking hate or trying to divide you. It's like when you start trying to bring people together, that's, it. that's when they start coming out. That's you. it. That's it. He was like when Malcolm X, when he was talking about, you know, black people need to go and do their own thing. They were like, hey, man, do you think? But when yep. he came back from his, uh, you know, from his hudge and everything, it was different. Yeah. When he was like, oh, you know what? He Maybe we should don't. And everybody was like, nah, man. We're not with that. He was a problem. Exactly. So, again, Tyrone, speaking on that, Malcolm X. And I think that people don't give Malcolm his credit, too. Like, we always talk about MLK, but Malcolm, you know, he was on that same wave. And Martin Luther King, and people don't teach us this in school. They actually switch sides almost. I was just about to. There yeah. you go. And, I mean, if you can, you can drop that knowledge And, and it's funny, because the reason I did that, I, I finally sat down and, like, watched the entire Malcolm <clears> X movie. Mm-hmm. <throat> Which is I didn't realize it was three hours long. It's dope. It's it's my favorite. It's a great movie. movie it's a great movie. Yep. But it was almost because I you know everybody knows, uh, well the they know the story of yep. um Martin Luther King. But then I knew about Martin Luther King. And I knew like the last was it last five years of Martin Luther King's life when he was starting to mm -hmm. change his perspective yep. on everything. And as I was watching the Malcolm X documentary, I mean the Malcolm X movie, uh, and you know just seeing how he was this very militant. Black people should fend for themselves. I don't care about what happens to white people. They're this, they're that. Yep. Then he switched. Yep, it was different. And then they didn't really talk about Martin in that movie, but that that resonated with me because I was mm -hmm. like, wow, now Martin Luther King, they were, they were polar opposites originally because mm -hmm. Martin Luther King was all like, we need to come together. We need to do this. Mm -hmm. And then Malcolm said, nah, we don't need to do that. Yep. But... As time went on, it changed. They switched sides completely. Yep. They were they now both on the other ends of the spectrum. Oh, Martin was it. like, "Dang, bro, maybe we shouldn't have done this." He said, maybe. "I let my people I'm into a burning house." Right? Exactly. Yeah. Maybe we should worry about you know focusing on our own. And yep. then Malcolm was like, "Hey, man, I just came from like another country, you know, and I see blacks, whites, Jews, everybody's coming together for like one common cause. Like yeah. it's very possible." Yeah. So he was like, "Maybe we should do that." And I just think that was that was interesting. And see, too, man, again, like what you said, Tyrone, when you said no one man should have all that power, shout out to Ye. But the fact that we have now, now people control narratives, like what we were talking about at the very beginning of the show, like mm -hmm. Rosa Parks. People don't understand the full context. Martin Luther King has been minimized to I have a dream without people understanding that the same man was talking before he died or before he was assassinated of going to Washington DC and collecting that check. He was talking about reparations. He was talking about also too of how he would get annoyed by white people and people in general that's not black talking about pick yourselves up by the bootstraps and work hard. But these same people got federal grants, they got loans. And after they got those loans, they have federal agents come down to the South and teach these people how to farm, how to take care of their crops, how to make money. So they were literally babied Mm -hmm. from start to finish and put in positions of power 
or you know also how uh the the irish men in new york or uh, up north that they, they were given firefighter jobs uh you had the mob going on and the police really didn't interfere with that because they wanted the italians to make their money mm -hmm. so then when it comes to us you're talking about pick ourselves up by the bootstraps but yet we built this country and i think that if people heard that martin luther king more rather than just a small snippet or some people haven't even been exposed to that so if people heard that that would kind of change their minds because i just hate how when some people say why not be like martin luther king and be peaceful and yada 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 but it's it's like he was the ideal citizen and he was still murdered so what are you saying like there's no appeasing somebody who doesn't have a conscience. and imagine if mlk and malcolm x teamed up some more yeah my favorite, you know, you, well, you're aware that when X-Men, well, throughout the entire mm -hmm. creation of X-Men, it's always been an allegory. I think today they say it's an allegory for, like, uh, LGBT community. Mm -hmm. But when it originally came out, it was an allegory for the civil rights movement. Right. And Dr. Xavier yep. and uh, Magneto yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are, you know, they're two men who want the same thing, yep. but they want to go about it two completely different ways. Yep. And they were both supposed to represent Malcolm X yep. and Martin Luther King. And I always thought that was an interesting little tidbit about that. Yeah, man, it's fire. And I think that we just have to be aware. Um, also, too, again, we have to question everything because Robert Kraft, apparently this wasn't his first time doing this. Mm. So I don't know why all of a sudden now it's this focus on him because... Well, because I, I, one of the theories that I've heard was that, because, you know, it, it's, it's an operation going on. Right, exactly. Um, and I don't know. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't think Robert Kraft had anything to mm -hmm. do with the actual human trafficking ring. I think he was just going there to get services. Right. Um, but someone pointed out that, you know, because they build these cases. They sit and watch and let everything happen. Mm -hmm. And then when they can get you, they get you. Right. So they probably came down and got some people. And somebody was probably like, Oh, like I already know what's finna happen. They finna start interrogating and cutting deals. Yep. I'm, I got Robert Kraft and I'm keeping him in my back pocket. Yep. So when I sit down in that interrogation room, they're going to be like, oh, well, I got Robert Kraft. Like Robert Kraft came through here. Mm -hmm. So I think that could possibly be like how he's getting so caught up in it. It's a like, very viable option. Yeah, I think somebody was probably like, well, I'll cut you a deal and give you Robert Kraft if you let me, you know. Get some time off. It was crazy, bro. I was in shock because I was just like, wow, man, this guy was really caught. But I think, man, this is powers at play right now because there's no way that he's the only singled out guy. Because I remember uh, the owner of the Colts a few years back, he was caught with cocaine in a car, a hooker, and I think it was like heroin too. Mm -hmm. And the only thing he had was just one rehab class. That's the only thing that he had to do. So I think Kraft, he'll probably get off. But you know, another thing was they're talking about the the NFL penalty for mm. it. And so what's that? I think they said, well, because there's a rule, and this oh, is wow. I think there were a lot of like people who were upset about this because mm -hmm. they were like, the maximum punishment you can give to an owner mm -hmm. is only like a five hundred thousand dollar fine, and that's nothing. Exactly. But yeah. then they were saying like, you know, there are players who have done less, and you know, kicked out the league. Exactly. Yep. So you know that was a reverse factor they were like mm -hmm. you know how do you necessarily feel about you know or how do you uh, you know how do you punish the owners you know yeah. how are the people who are the big players how do they get huge things like that and i think too what people have to understand and i get it you know trying to be fair when it's like well the players do this and they're kicked off the team but the owner does this wild movie type of stuff and he's still there but would you fire Jeff Bezos for doing a little crazy stuff compared to in regular Amazon employee? No, because he's the guy, he's the brains behind it. So he can do more and he can get away with more because he's up top, which isn't fair, of course, but it is what it is. I mean, but these are like, like they're saying like these are criminal activities. Facts. So it's Criminal, like, criminal. Like you're talking about sex trafficking. Yeah. And especially mm -hmm. if it goes deeper than just, you know, him soliciting. It's a whole ring. Yeah. If it goes deeper than that and like they're, you know, the NFL is really going to. But then again, like we said, Roger Goodell will probably happily give uh, Robert Kraft <laughs> a year fire note or something like that. That's it. That's facts, man. Tyrone, before we go, are you ready for some trivia? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Let's see what we got today, man. I think the first one is 90s movies. Okay. Because I, I remember one episode, I was like, how'd you know that movie, man? <laughs> so let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Okay. It's loading. Let's go down. All right, trivia question number one. What is the name of Will Smith's character in Independence Day? Option A, 
Captain Stephen Hiller. Option B, Captain John Jacobs. Option C, Captain Philip Bear. So one more time. What is the name of Will Smith's character in Independence Day? Option A, Captain Stephen Hillard. Option B, Captain John Jacobs. Option C, Philip Bear. You know, it's crazy mm-hmm. because, you know, I, I, Will Smith was one of the top billed uh, actors in that movie, but I don't even think he's really like that big of the, in that movie. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even play that big of a part in the movie. Oh, he does play a big part, but he's not like in the movie a lot. Right. Uh, gosh. I want to go with John Jacobs. That's really what stands out to me. Okay. I get you with these names, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Hiller. Ah, oh, that was my yeah, second choice. Yeah. That one really, I was like, Hiller, that sounds like a, a movie name. But yeah. then I, something about John Jacobs just. Yeah, it stood out a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But that is crazy, though. People, that's one of those things people love attributing Independence Day to him, but it's like he's not even really that big in the movie. But yeah. he, he was Will Smith at the time, and he's still Will Smith now. He's the man. He's so. the man. Bet. Number two, what Native American language uh, was Super Bowl C, Super Bowl 30, the first to be broadcasted in? Option A, Navajo. Option B, Cherokee. Option C, Cheyenne. So again, what Native American language was Super Bowl 30, the first to be broadcasted in? Option A, Navajo. Option B, Cherokee. Option C, Cheyenne. Wow, I didn't even know they did that. Me neither. I found out today. I found (laughs) out today. (laughs) Okay, let's see. Well, I... I'm pretty sure. I think like the biggest Native American population left is still it's either Cherokee or Navajo. I don't remember which one. You though. are correct. You are correct. So it process has to, of elimination. Yeah, it has to be one of those two. But I don't remember which one has the biggest population. Hmm. I want to. S- mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I know you're gonna get this right. You will get this right. It's like a fifty-fifty chance. It I'm is. like flipping a coin, really. I'm going to go with Cherokee. It's actually Navajo. Ah! <laughs> ah. I knew I it. I knew it. <laughs> I should have gave one more hint because I know that that would have helped. Yeah. Like I said, I knew I knew it couldn't have been Cheyenne because I'm like Cherokee. One, uh, well, it has to be Navajo. Then, yeah. Since but like they're like really the only population of Native Americans left. That's really. facts. That's facts. It's almost there. Matter of fact, let's see. Uh yeah, I think that those were the two I found so far. So that's pretty much it, man. That's all the trivia. But <laughs> Tyrone, man, we were talking about albums, all that good stuff. You've been doing a dope job with all the photography. You already know I've been checking that out. So, so far right now, um, what artists or photographers or whoever, creatives, we can say, are people sleeping on right now that you should probably plug them into? Let's see. Well, the last two I have done musicians, so let me do a photographer this time. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. There is a photographer. I don't know his full name. I just know his first name is Diego. I don't okay. know. I guess his artist name is Dead Picasso. That's, oh, that's I like his, that. That's that his IG. Cool. Yeah, that's his IG handle, Dead okay. Picasso, if you want to check him out. He's... Uh, I like his story. I haven't ever got... I've, I've only like met him once okay. in person, but mm-hmm. I see him around in a lot of functions and I follow his art. Um, but I, I th- believe he moved to the country in like when he was like in the s- sixth grade, maybe. Okay. Maybe older than that, honestly. Okay. Didn't know English, anything like that. But I think he said through like music and TV and all, he nice. eventually caught up nice. on the English language. Nice. Um, and he's a really dope photographer. He's been doing a lot of work with some of the up and coming uh, musicians around. Nice. Uh, I think he's done some things with like Cody Shane okay. and uh, things like that. Uh, but yeah, Dead cool. Picasso, Diego. Like shout out to you, man. I like it, bro. I'm with it, man. What about you? Any music? Me on. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Eric Bellinger, of course. I think mm-hmm. that he needs his own due credit, man. He doesn't get enough, and mm-hmm. I think that that's a very beautiful skill to see somebody who's a accomplished songwriter, but he can make his own songs. Mm-hmm. So the fact that this album, I think it's like 36 songs total, wow, which is really nice, and. Man, he's been having some slept on hits. So I just think that that's somebody that's super, super duper talented. So Eric Bellinger, great R&B vibes for just, you know, kicking back in the car, all that stuff. Really nice. And El Hay, he dropped his album last Friday. It's E-L-H-A-E. 
very dope artist as well really cool laid back and he's on the come up so i think that those two artists right there just the fact that they dropped something oh and also another guy it's been so many i think last friday was like national r&b day because <laughs> if solange dropped her album last friday i would have just pff, like crazy like everybody in the r&b world yeah so it's this third guy uh, his name is mike classic Hmm. And it's M I K E and then last name Classic. But he dropped his EP last Friday to R and B. But his is like a Tory Lanez type of vibe. Gotcha. But his was very, very solid too. It was about six to seven songs. So the fact that it was a lot of good artists that I saw last week that were dropping things last Friday. And I think that this year so far that there's been a lot of hard work going on, you know, with Future. And I think T-Pain, I heard that he dropped something. Yeah, like a surprise Yeah, album. so I have to play that this weekend most definitely because I love T-Pain. I think that he carried the mid-2000s, late-2000s on his back. I think that hip-hop wouldn't be in the place that it is right now in R&B. Auto-tune. Auto-tune, period. There, there wouldn't be a Tory Lanez. Drake wouldn't even there exist. There Travis Scott. Travis know. Scott. And Drake, again, because I think that T-Pain made, or Future, T-Pain made that thing cool again. I think the last person that was using autotune like that was Roger, maybe. And you remember Roger? He's the guy who sings um, on oh, the from hook. Oh, like Zappin' Roger? Oh, uh, uh, he, Computer Love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he's the same guy from... Uh, California Love? There you go. Yeah, Thank yeah, yeah. you. So the fact that we... And Jay-Z killed it with Death of Autotune. See, but then T-Pain was like, eh. Yeah. Maybe, but then you know the the fact that we still get these artists like the Travis Scotts of the world. So I think that T Pain dropping something right now, we have to show respect and play that. So it's just right now, man. Really, old heads can't say that rap and R and B are dead because I think that they're actually in another golden age right now, especially R and B and especially rap too. Like you can get any type of thing that you want. Like if mm-hmm. you want some ignorant stuff, you can get that. If you want some that has substance to it, you can get that. And if you want a party or a nice chill vibe, you can get all those things. So I think right now it's just music, film, all that stuff. I think it's like a brand new renaissance right now. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really feeling it. And photography as well. I think that the fact that, you know, seeing kids like our age and older just doing photography, videography, like we're telling podcasts, like right now, like everybody's telling their own story. So it's really exciting seeing our stuff. So plug everybody, man. Yeah, That's man. it. That's it. Be great. My boy, Tyrone. Hey, I appreciate you, man. We have another dope episode, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Take it easy, man. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves and kill this semester and do your best. Much love. Peace.